Bonjour everyone, Dan Joseph here. Now in every presidency, there's always at least one moment where the whole country looks at the commander in chief, throws up their hands and says, what could you have possibly been thinking? For Bill Clinton, it was the sex scandal. For Bush, it wasn't landing in New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. And for President Obama, it's essentially been the period between January 21st, 2009 and today. But one moment will go down as the biggest what the hell were you thinking moment of the Obama presidency, and you all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> no, not that. The decision not to attend the Paris Unity Rally after the horrific acts of Islamic terrorism in which 12 journalists were killed. Yes, almost every other first world leader was there. And yes, he is considered to be the leader of the free world, but for some reason he just didn't show up to one of the largest shows of solidarity against Islamic terrorism in modern history. Here's his schedule for the day of the march. It's, it's totally empty. Here's Joe Biden's schedule for that day. It has a picture of a chicken in a spacesuit on it, but otherwise it's also empty. So what happened? Now, as you know, I'm one of those guys who likes to give President Obama the benefit of the doubt. So today I'm going to go over five completely understandable reasons why Obama may have missed this seminal moment in world history where even Muslim world leaders stood side by side to condemn Islamic terror. Reason number one, he just didn't hear about the march. Now, as we all know, President Obama doesn't know about a lot of stuff that happens until he actually hears about it on the news. The VA scandal, the IRS scandal, the NSA spying on foreign leaders, the healthcare website not being ready to launch, Fast and Furious, the fact that we adopted a couple thousand Central American children. With a lot of major events, Obama is just totally clueless until he sees the story on MSNBC or Al Jazeera. So it's totally understandable that he may not have even known about the giant march being attended by over 40 world leaders and millions of people until he saw it happening on the news on Sunday. I mean, listen, the march was planned on Friday. Obviously, that's when Glee is on, so Obama wouldn't have been watching the news. Saturday, there was the NFL playoffs, which brings us to the second reason why Obama may have missed the pair. March. Reason number two, football. Football! Everybody loves the playoffs and there's the thing. I was in Europe at the beginning of the NFL season and I really wanted to see some NFL football. There is absolutely nowhere in Europe that shows American football games on TV. Every television station in Europe shows one of two things. Soccer games and terrible European music videos. That's it. All the time. If I wanted to watch that, I would move to hell. I mean, you can understand why Obama wouldn't want to miss the big divisional playoff games instead of soccer. I mean, if anybody wanted to watch a bunch of croissant-eating dudes in short shorts chase balls around for two hours, they'd go to brunch. He could have had someone TiVo the games for him, but nobody wants that. Someone tells you what happens before you get to watch it, and you're all like, you idiot, I wanted to find out myself. And they're all like, well, now you can do something else with your time. And I'm all like, geez, mom, why do you always do this? And she's like, why aren't you married yet? And I'm like, I'm married to the TiVo. Why can't you just accept our love? Wow, I need a life coach. Look, Obama is a busy guy. He's the leader of the free world, which means he has to give free stuff to everybody in the world, and that's hard. I mean, it's not like he has his own plane that can go super fast and take him anywhere he wants at a moment's notice. Really? Neato. Reason number three, this chick. Remember her? She's the super hot Danish prime minister who Obama was flirting and taking selfies with at the Mandela Memorial? Because that's what you do at a memorial. And we all remember how Michelle Obama reacted to that. Hulk smash! If Michelle found out that Denmark Barbie was going to be in Paris, which she was, she may have chased Obama around the White House with a rolling pin if he said he was going and put him on a steady diet of public school kid food for the rest of his life. Reason number four. Security. Okay, this was the official excuse that the White House put out to explain why Obama didn't attend the event. An event that was populated by every other world leader and had a massive security presence to begin with. The problem with that excuse is that the Secret Service says that the White House never even mentioned going to the Paris rally to them. They never even asked about the logistics of protecting the president if he were to go. So either Obama was scared or Obama was never going to go in the first place and he knew it all along. He intentionally missed it. More on that in a second. Number five, why didn't he just send Joe Biden? Okay, that's a dumb question. You know who we're talking about here, right? 
Joe Biden. If they had sent Biden, by the time the march was over, France would have declared war on Ecuador, Angela Merkel would have filed the sexual harassment suit, and Bill Cosby would be the new U.S. ambassador to Sweden. And if they were so concerned about security, what if something would have happened to Biden? Obama doesn't want to have to go to his funeral either. How do you write a eulogy for Joe Biden? Joe Biden was, well, he was, he was vice president. He used to go to Five Guys to get his burgers. He got the order right nearly 50% of the time. We should all be very supportive and proud of France. For once, they were attacked and they didn't surrender. So what excuse could Obama possibly have had to miss this huge opportunity to show that the United States stands with Europe in the fight against Muslim insanity? Here's my theory, and it's not that Obama is some kind of secret Muslim who loves ISIS and wants to bring Sharia law to Ohio. Obama doesn't like to publicly associate himself or his administration with the idea of the religion of Islam being the cause of terrorism. I mean, he'll bomb the hell out of Islamic terrorists with drones, but he seems to think that if the US doesn't talk about Islamic extremism or use the word Islamic or apparently appearing with those who are condemning it that this will make it seem like we're not really involved in fighting Islamic terror and the Muslim fanatics will just go terrorize someone else. Talking about terrorism too much also distracts him from his domestic agenda and we can't have that. It's not like those old people are just going to death panel themselves, right? So he publicly ignores it. Downplay it as much as you can, no matter what, and just kind of hope it goes away. It seems to be working great. That's it for today. I'm Dan Joseph. Please like my Facebook page and subscribe to this channel. All you need is a Gmail account and then to click the little red widget below and my videos will get sent to your inbox. It's like magic. See you next time. Je suis Charlie. Oh, TiVo, will they ever understand our love? <laughs> TiVo, you're so sweet. Mm.